Hey guys, Captain Levi here, coming at you with that spicy theory for Final Fantasy VIII that I've been speaking about. The spicy theory being that Rhinoa is Ultimacy. Square has tried to debunk this and say that it's not true, but many like I believe this is a bluff and it is true. And I'm not just coming at you with smoke and mirrors, I'm coming at you guys with a lot of proof and info that has been brought up and spoken about for years, but I'm also introducing a few new things that I haven't seen anyone talk about. Some will be non-canon such as Dissidia and some will be simply from the game itself, but either way, neither topic has been spoken of as far as I'm concerned. So sit back folks, grab your hot dogs and scarf them down till you're choking because this is going to be a good one. So like many of y'all out there who are Final Fantasy slash Final Fantasy 8 nutcases like myself will have heard of the Rhinoa's Ultimacia or Ultimacia's Rhinoa theory. I could seriously end this video here with just saying how Rhinoa asked Squall what the name of the ring is and whatever name you give it or if you go with this default Griever Ultimacia ends up summoning said name slash Griever at the end of the game when summoning the most powerful GF ever. GF meaning Guardian Force. Guardian. Sorcerers need a knight in Final Fantasy VIII. And Squall was Rhinoa's. Meaning Squall was the knight. But that's his own rabbit hole. But seriously guys, why would Ultimacia summon Griever without knowing or having any connection to Squall? Some debunkers, as I like to call them, say that she attaches herself to Squall to see what he envisions as the most powerful creature or being. But, uh, I have done the Ultimacia fight more times than I have had failed marriages. And it's safe to say she has never done anything along the lines like that in the fight. You kind of just smack her up and she just says, The most powerful GF. Dot, dot, dot. You shall. Dot, dot, dot. Suffer. Dot, dot, dot. Ha, 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 ha. Then Griever or said name appears and you fight him. She never does some fancy thing where she gets tethered to Squall or anything. But this video is focused on Rhinoa and Ultimacia. The main thing I want to bring up is the fact that there is no concrete proof that Rhinoa isn't Ultimacia. People go back and forth in forums about this and truthfully they have a point. We have no proof besides Katasi's statement that says that this is not true and not the case. The game is a piece of art and art should be perceived by the viewer in whatever way the viewer believes is right. Not saying that this is true just because I say it is, but we are talking about a game that doesn't even want you to know that Laguna is Squall's father. And also doesn't want you to know what happened to Squall at the end of disc 1, which is another rabbit hole on its own. So, I wouldn't put this theory in the bin so quickly, just because Square or Katase said this isn't the case. The worst case scenario, this is what they intended, and during crunch time period for the end of the development of the game, they decided just to make Ultimacia an evil villain with evil intentions, and have no convoluted story by having a connection to Rhinoa and time compression. So before we get into the nitty gritty of this video, let's talk about facial structure and similarities. Rhinoa's facial structure is identical to Ultimacia's. Rhinoa has beautiful white fluffy feather wings while Ultimacia has black corroded sharp wings. When a sorceress is given her power she can easily become overran by the immense magic power thus turning them evil. That's why you see Adea, Ultimacia, and Adele with sharp fingers and evil colored eyes. But with the similarities out of the way, let's get to the meat of the video. Besides the fact that Rhinoa is the only person in the game, besides Squall, who knows the name of Griever and Ultimacia summoning her, there is a very peculiar thing that happens in Ultimacia's very last form. If you look at the top half of its body, it's missing a face, with the bottom half having a dangling female body which I believe to be Rhinoa, either from the present or dead from the future, or just being dead in general from any time period. The body doesn't move at all, it's quite grim. Actually, but here's what gets me, what I haven't seen is nobody talk about this so far, at all. Final Ultimacia uses Draw Apocalypse 
from the dangling body about two thirds of the way through the fight. Why would she need to draw an ability from herself when she is already almighty? I believe she is drawing out an untapped ability of Rhinoa when she was alive in the present because why else would she have to draw this from a dangling body? Right, no one never learned this ability named Apocalypse in the game, and the very next thing Ultimacia does after she does draw Apocalypse in this fight is use Apocalypse. Like I said before, I haven't seen anybody speak about this drawing Apocalypse part of the battle. But uh, here's where we go a little bit non-canon, but has drastically given proof to my claim. Rhinoa is a DLC character for Dissidia NT, and there are some people fired up because of Ultimacia's weapons being called and being Rhinoa's weapons, and saying that it isn't proof. And I agree, but when it comes down to this single topic, this whole theory becomes a reality to me. In NT, Dissidia NT. One of Rhinoa's HP attacks is Apocalypse. Why would she have Apocalypse? This all just leads me to believe that Rhinoa and Ultimacia are conjoined, just as Adele and Rhinoa were at one point. Even if Ultimacia isn't Rhinoa and that whole theory isn't true, there is at least some true connection there. There has to be, because there is no reason as to why Rhinoa would have Ultimacia's ability Apocalypse, which in Final Fantasy VIII she had to draw from a dangling body underneath her, which is supposed to be Ultimacia, but at this point nobody even knows because we don't have proof. But I feel like we got a lot of proof from this one, guys. So um, that's about it for this video. That's the proof that I dug up. Took me a while to make this video, so if you could share this with any of your friends, your buddies, any other Final Fantasy VIII nutcases and people who just love conspiracies and theories alike, show them this video. Show them, because I know that this is truly, truly, truly a great point that I'm making here. And like I said, Ultimacia has abilities like Hell's Judgment. And she does use Apocalypse in Final Fantasy Dissidia NT, or Dissidia NT Final Fantasy. She has the, the attack, but it's not even nowhere near the same. Like, it's a projectile attack that comes out, as compared to the way Rhinoa's looks, which is the way it looks like in Final Fantasy VIII. It just, it just baffles me. So, if you guys liked and enjoyed this video, please just let me know. I will definitely make more. Please comment, share it, do whatever you possibly can. If you agree, let me know down below in the comments for sure. But um, it'd be great if everybody could just help out a bit because this video did take a while to make. And I feel like nobody's spoken about this. And it's such an old topic and it's such an old game. It's over 20 years old. Yet nobody has brought this up before. So... I just wanted to say this, guys, so I appreciate it. I would highly advise that you guys let me know if y'all want to see anything else like this. But it's been your boy, Captain Levi, and once again, I am out of here. Peace.